How long does it take you to make a healthy, delicious gourmet meal? One hour, maybe two hours? Stay tuned to meet a man who is hooking it up and cooking it up in just 30 minutes. My name is Jason Bradley, and you're watching Urban Report. <laughs> Welcome to Urban Report. Dr. Lewis, who is also my mom, was on the set of Cook 30 for Kids with chef slash restaurateur Jeremy Dixon. We will begin airing Cook 30 right here on the Dare to Dream Network very, very soon. In the meantime, let's take a look at what Jeremy had to say. I am so happy today to be sitting on the set with Jeremy Dixon, and this set is Cook 30. <laughs> Jeremy, welcome to Urban Report. Thank you very much. Yes. Welcome to Cook 30. I know, I know. <laughs> You're doing Cook 30, you're doing Cook 30 for kids. It's awesome, really, really. Okay, so some of our viewers may or may not be familiar with you, so mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about who is Jeremy Dixon? <laughs> Where'd you grow up? Um, I know it's not Brooklyn, but actually. <laughs> No, I'm from New Zealand. Okay. Do, you know, do you know where New Zealand is? Uh, tell me. Near Australia. Near <laughs> little Australia, Little right? country near Australia. It's right. about a three-hour plane ride from Australia. Okay. Down the bottom of the world near Antarctica. Wow. So I've lived there all my life, and um, that's my home country. Okay, okay. Now, when you came here, was this to, to, to 3ABN, was this your first time coming to the States, or...? I've, like... I've visited the States on business occasionally before, but uh, since to, up to now I've made now four trips to the US to 3ABN to um, do the filming. It's been wow. lots of fun. So you grew up in New Zealand? Grew up in New Zealand, yes. And were you, did you grow up in a Christian home? No, I actually grew up in, my parents were not Christians, so I grew up in a, I suppose, secular home, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we had absolutely no religious kind of, or, or Christian kind of upbringing. Um, wonderful, wonderful parents. So I had amazing, amazing parents. Yes. Um, but they just, you know, they, they'd come from homes where um, Christianity was kind of shoved down their throat. So they were kind of, you know, really, um, had a very unpleasant view of it. So they kind of, as soon as they grew up, they left kind of that, that experience, so. It's, kind of, it's so sad, right, that mm. many times Christianity does get forced. Instead exactly. of people understanding and having a relationship with Jesus, mm. it, the rules get really I know, and I see a lot pushed. of parents get very tough on their kids with, you know, you must do this, do this, do this, and, and, and you kind of got to have that balance and let you know, kids have got to make their own decisions at the end of the day, and you've got to kind of gently lead them, I think, and it's a it's a very hard balance. But yeah, yeah. Yes. So you, you, you weren't in a Christian home, but you became a Christian. That's How? right. Well, I went to a high school, went to a secular high school in New Zealand, and I met a friend there who was an Adventist, and we got on really well, and he invited me to some youth activities, and um, really enjoyed them, got to know some new friends, and while I was there, he dragged me along to some prophecy seminars and things like that, <laughs> and really enjoyed them. And about that time, I kind of was thinking, you know, what's the point of life? I mean, we just die and it's just blackness and it's death and there's nothing. And I was like, what's the point of life? And so at the same time I was thinking that, I, this, you know, this great message came along. All of the prophecies of the Bible just came clear. It's like, hey, these guys have got it together. It's a really clear message of what's happening in this world. You know, I get saved, I live forever, and I just signed up, I was sold. Oh man, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it, how the Holy Spirit will woo you how he'll work on you because you had begun to think about what's the meaning of life? Exactly. Like, why am I here? Like what? And at that time, your friend invited you to us to seminars and yes. stuff like that. It's like God just knows what we need when we need it, and He knows how to bring us from this point to this point. He does. But influence is critical, mm -hmm. and you are using your influence. In cooking, yes. Tell us about <laughs> that. <laughs> Tell us about that. So um, I worked for a, a, a after I finished university. I worked for an Adventist company in New Zealand called Sanitarium. Don't know if you've heard it or not. It's a it's kind of like the Kellogg's of New Zealand and Australia. Oh, okay. And it's owned by uh, by the Adventist Church. Wonderful, wonderful company to work through for. So I worked for them for about ten years in marketing roles and ex, you know, executive type roles and had a lot of fun there. Now, were you cooking at that time? No, no. I was just doing kind of marketing stuff and okay. business stuff. Um, and but then I kind of started getting interested in health. You know, the company was a had a big health focus. And I kind of got to a point where I kind of wanted a bit more of an 
adventure with God. I kind of, you know, you hear all these inspired, you know, these you read these books of people who do amazing things. I'm like, wow, I want a life like that. So I kind of decided I want to go and do something risky and take the plunge and, and give it a go. Yeah. So, um, so one, uh, basically it's probably around about early 2000s, um, I decided to, to quit my job. Um, so I had a really good high paying job with them. And I quit that and I opened up a little cafe in the down in downtown Auckland Central. Wow. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're doing marketing yep. and you do that for like 10 years or something. Yep. And while you're doing that, you start investigating cooking? That's right. Trying yes. so little I different getting, things. But I wasn't a chef at that stage, although my wife and I did go to a health retreat in Australia that kind of inspired. We came back feeling great and wonderful, you know, eating lots of healthy plant-based foods, drinking water, exercise, getting sleep, doing all the basic stuff that we all know about makes a, made a massive difference to us. So we're like, we've got to share this with people. And, you know, in Auckland, you just could not find healthy food. So oh. it's like, let's start a healthy food restaurant. Oh, see, that's incredible. So you realized how beneficial it was for you to eat like that. Definitely. And you thought, let's help other people. Exactly. To do that. So I believe in getting up every morning with lots of energy and vitality. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you, as a Christian or anyone, getting out of, dragging yourself out of bed, caffeinating yourself and, you know, dra dragging along, bad mood, you know, if you put good, healthy food in your body and follow the natural, you know, the laws of health, you know, water, sleep, exercise, all those type of things, um, you feel amazing. Yes. And why would you not want to live life with lots of energy and vitality? Absolutely. You know, there's so many people today who don't make the connection between mm. nutrition and lifestyle mm. and health and energy. So when people are tired and dragging and all that, exactly. you know, a lot of times you're not getting enough sleep, you're yep. eating too much sugar or whatever, and you're just dragging. Mm. So you went to that health seminar, you and your wife, Verity, went to the, the health seminar, felt great when you came back and said, we're gonna, we're gonna open up our own restaurant. And you started cooking then? Um, no, was I actually, that when you I actually hired cooking? a chef. So when I started okay. out, I hired a chef um, who was gonna do the cooking. I set all the recipes and the, the menus and the systems behind the place. And we wow. started a cafe, it was very exciting. Wow, and so, did, when you first started, what were some of the challenges that you faced when you first started the cafe? Well, we nearly went bankrupt about three times. Ooh. The first two years were just horrible, probably the most ho terrible experiences of my life. And when you sign up for a cafe, you actually sign up a lease. You're personally guaranteeing a lease of you know several hundred thousand dollars over many years. So there's, there's big financial pressures. And I started out thinking I knew it all, but I didn't. So it took me about two years of um, actually learning how to run a, run a restaurant right. because there's lots of things in the hospitality industry you don't see in the background that right. I didn't know about. Um, we had massive financial problems, nearly went under. Um, it was a huge journey of faith for those two years. I was just, you know, beside myself. I wanted to quit so many times, but I couldn't. But you just pray, stick through it. And I think God, God well, God has blessed my life. He more kind of gives me wisdom. So I search for wisdom, search for people to help me, and by doing that, turn things around and then and then develop it develop it to be a very, you know, it's now a very successful kind of, you know, vegetarian cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you, knowing what you know now yes. about opening a restaurant, and all, what mm -hmm. would you do differently than you did back then? Yeah, and a lot of people come to me and ask me, I want to set up my own vegetarian cafe or restaurant, what should I do? There's probably two things I'd do. Number one thing I, which I um, would do if I did it again is I would actually have gone and worked in a cafe yes. for probably six months, even McDonald's or some of the unhealthier cafes, worked in those, find out what the goings on and becoming knowledgeable and finding the you know the, the secrets of the trade and how it works in the background. And that would have saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars, endless sleepless nights if I'd just taken on that for six months beforehand. But I just wanted to rush and get into yeah. it. And looking back, I've got no regrets. How I did it, it happened and I had a, a huge faith experience. So how it happened is, it's fine, but yeah. my advice to anyone else would be to find out how it works first and, and find out where your talents are. You know, if you're a front of house person, like a bubbly multitasking person, then you need to hire a chef or an accountant. If you're the kitchen person, you may need to hire a bubbly out of front, front of house person. And mm. you just need to make sure you, not one person runs a restaurant. You need to have a team of people. And you, if you are going to start when well, you need to know what, what jobs you're going to do and what talents you don't have, 
and you need to get someone else to do those. And that's probably the main, the main advice there. That's good. That's good because I was just talking to someone recently about they want to go into this whole other field. And I said, work in it first before you try exactly. to have your own business in it because you don't know the ins and outs. Exactly. So that's what you did. That's what you want. That's what you should have done. Should have done, yeah. but so you did the hard way. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's... yeah. And so you, well, I missed the step here. I missed the step because we've talked about your wife. Yes. But we didn't talk about how you met your wife. So let's go <laughs> back and talk about that. How did you meet your lovely wife? Erica? Meet my um, in Auckland. Uh, we actually both come from Christchurch, is our hometown. Um, so that's where we both grew up. Um, well, we didn't cross paths there, not that we know about. Um, and it wasn't until we both moved to Auckland um, and we met through mutual friends. Um, we basically saw each other and liked each other and, and met up. Was it love at first sight? Oh, she's, she's yeah, she's, yeah. <laughs> Almost, yeah, yeah. You know, you have that kind of period where you kind of go through and uh -huh. and kind of court each other, and you know, but she's yeah, wonderful, wonderful woman. That's you know, been part of my journey as well. So, if it wasn't for with, without her, this whole exciting adventure wouldn't have happened. So, and it's, it's so a important, isn't it, to have a partner who can be in ministry with you Definitely. that shares your values, and sure. she wanted to eat healthy too. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Yeah. So together, we you know, we've got that that shared passion and mission. Yes, yes. Now, tell us about Cook 30. <laughs> what is Cook 30 all about? Because we're going to show it on Dare to Dream. Which on, is fantastic. Yeah, it's I know. I'm it's so wonderful. Happy. I'm so happy you're going to do that. So tell us about it. Why? What's different about Cook 30? You know, what's different about that as opposed to other programs about cooking? So Cook 30 is kind of how I cook at home. So it's ba basically using my philosophy of um, kind of nutrition, which is all about using whole whole foods, plant-based foods. So it's vegetarian, um, um, you know, no meat, no dairy. Um, we don't use white flour, any processed foods. Um, we mm. stay away from all those kind of pre-prepared meat analogues and things like that. So everything's just very natural whole food ingredients is probably the number one thing, um, which is like the food I serve at my cafes. Right. And the number two being 30 minutes. So basically 30 minutes, you're gonna cook a complete meal for your family. Wow. But it's multitasking. So basically you might, the episode might start, you put the rice on, the brown rice on, get that underway. Then you might start sautéing some onions for the curry. Then you might quickly go and make a salad and then um, get that done. Then you might go back, add some more things to the curry and get that going again. Um, then you might add another little dish or make a hummus from the blender or something like that. So it's kind of moving throughout the kitchen, coming back to the curry, finishing the salad, garnishing off and bang, 30 minutes you've got a meal with all those dishes. Wow, so describe a meal, one whole meal that you can do in 30 minutes. I know you were telling us the process. Now, yep. what what kinds of meals can you have? So this is kind of more minutes? entertaining meal, so very high quality restaurant style. Mm. So for example, one episode, um, I think the first one is something like a, a, a beautiful Thai pumpkin spinach ginger curry. Mm. So it's got, you know, with tofu in it. So a really nice, delicious curry. Serving on brown rice. So cooking up brown rice. Brown rice is obviously much, much better for you than white rice. Absolutely. Um, so I've got that there as well. Then it might be like a broccoli salad. So some of my salads are really easy. For example, you might just chop up broccoli, steam it, and then sprinkle on some um, some sliced uh, almonds and some cranberries mm -hmm. and a little bit of olive oil. That's just a really nice, simple salad. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and then for dessert, it might be something like a smoothie. So basically, throw some bananas, some frozen fruit in the blender, and um, a little bit of almond milk, and you've got a delicious smoothie. So basically doing all that in a very short amount of time. So multitasking, lots of, you know, chef tricks, um, and also choosing different ingredients you can use in a, in, in a, um, in a very short time as well. Mmm, that sounds so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fast paced, like, I've, I'm against the clock here, I'm basically, every program, like, I've got, I'm just racing for it, chopping things, garnishing things, looking at the clock to get things finished in that, in that time. It's just a real, and it's a real mental challenge to do it, because you've got to actually make the food look good, you've got to say things that are intelligent and finish the food in that time. It's, it's, it's really fun. That's, that seems like it would be a lot of pressure, because you, that, that clock is on and you have 30 minutes. Exactly. Well, it's actually less everything. because there's, you know, there's um, promo breaks and things as well. So it's actually only about 25 minutes worth of actual cooking. So yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a great challenge. I love them. But what's great is we need to know this is such a fast paced society that we live hmm. in. And when you come home from work, you don't want to be slaving over the stove for hours trying to make a healthy meal for your mm. family. If you can do it in 30 minutes, which is to me what's so appealing. Mm. I mean, this is 30 minutes and you can have a, 
a kind of gourmet kind of vegetarian meal there exactly. for your family. So I think that that is incredible. Yeah. And the, I mean, the first time you make it, it may not take 30 minutes, but you know, try it once, it may take an hour. But once you've done it a couple of times and you, you've learnt the techniques and recipes, you'll get really quick at some of these things. So there's like a, a process that you go through. Like it's not just, because one, okay, let me just tell you, I am like not, like I can cook, yeah. but I'm, that's not, I cook because I had a family, I had kids, you know. You just have to. I had just had to. But now my kids are grown, so I don't, mm. you know, so sometimes I cook, sometimes I don't. But I'm not great at knowing when to put, like, when you're trying to do a bunch of different things. What order what do you, do you do What order? Exactly. Like, what do I do first? Like, how do I get this, <laughs> you know, set up for this and this? And it sounds like that's one of the things you teach. Yes. And so part of it is a few things. Number one is kind of prep. So we always start with everything laid out on the bench, getting a clear clear, sorry, counter, you guys call it, ah. and get everything, getting everything prepared, all your ingredients out. But you're thinking, always think, got to be thinking ahead. So, you know, what's going to take the longest mm. in my thing? So brown rice, okay, that's a 30-minute cook. Get that on first, straight away. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got some roasted vegetables. That's about 20 minutes. Bang, get them in the oven straight away. So and do you do frozen vegetables or do you do fresh? Uh, both, everything. So, for example, okay. for example, frozen peas is a really lovely ingredient that you can just fire in a curry to give it a little bit of greenness and a little bit of moisture or right. a salad even. So, um, And things you can leave to the end, like the smoothie, you kind of want to do it at the end just before you serve. And, um, you know, the salad you can kind of do any time. So it's just thinking ahead of every ingredient. What's going to be holding me up? Because the worst thing is getting to just before serving, you're like, oh, I forgot to put the rice on. Oh. And then you're another 30 <laughs> minutes before you can eat. That's Whereas right. if you'd had that thought 30 minutes before, no problem at all. So it's right. just learning and training your mind to think ahead what's coming up. That's really good. That's good. Because somebody like me who is just not, you know, like the queen of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and my stuff's simple. Like, like I actually didn't, don't have a, a chef degree or anything. I, I thought about going to, to chef school. But the more I investigated it, all I learned is about matching wines, how to cook steaks to different ways, how to put as much butter and sugar and chocolate into desserts as possible using white flour. And um, there's actually not much vegetable there. So I've self-trained using all my chefs, all my different ingredients in my restaurant. So I've, I've kind of had more of a practical practical learning to make, to develop my kind of style of cooking. That's tremendous, though, because, mm. you know, you didn't have to go to chef school, but you know a lot of these different techniques for healthy plant-based exactly. living. And that's... That's really the best way anyway. Exactly. And I'm, I'm not a complicated chef. I'm not into baking and stuff. My stuff's really simple. I think it's why people like the, the program and my cookbooks as well is because it's really simple. I'm not a two-hour thing. I'm like a just throw some things in a pan, <laughs> cook it up, put it on the plate, a few little tricks to make it look beautiful. That's kind of my style. Yes. And people appreciate the easiness and the simplicity of the recipes. That's why I want to have it on here today. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think people will appreciate it, you know, because you don't want to have to cook long periods of time no. and have stuff. So now what about you doing also for our kids network at 3ABN, you're doing a kids cook 30. That's right. Tell and us about that. Brenda Walsh asked me to do a cook 30 for kids and I'm like, oh, cooking with, people have warned me about working with kids before, <laughs> but I've, I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. And we've just finished, um, finished taping them and that was a, the most incredible adventure. So having two or three children in the kitchen with me, um, it was a blast. It was the most fun I've ever had cooking with the children. Oh, wow. At some stage we've had like, you know, three children here. One's chopping here, one's putting stuff in the blender, one's stirring things there. I'm getting stuff from the fridge. We're just scrambling <laughs> around the kitchen having so much fun pulling all these meals together. It's, it's a, it was a great experience. What and showing that kids it? can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing because it, you can create memories in the kitchen with your kids. Exactly. So what kinds of menus did you have with so, your kids? So we did decided we weren't going to just do simple kid food. So we we're actually going to you know, show the children how to do, use actual to prepare restaurant quality meals, how to you know use a sharp knife, how to cook on a pan, use boiling water. You know, actually we're not we didn't dumb it down to like you know right. little ease. We wanted to you know show them real stuff, real ingredients they can use, real flavors and things, so they can actually get more experience at cooking. So it's it's a it's a really really fun program. Ah, oh, that's so good. And so make sure you tune into. Kids Cook 30, right? Kids yes, Cook yes, 30 yes, yes. on the Kids Network. Yes, yes. ABN. So what would you say have been the greatest experiences that you've had as far as helping people with eating healthy? Yeah, and I suppose one of the things that really um, humbles me is that every week I get multiple emails from people saying, um, 
look, you just helped me. I've started, I've just found your cookbook and our health has improved. My diabetes has improved. Um, my family now want to eat healthy food. So I'm just in awe of every, people have called me up crying saying how eating food has just changed their life in such an amazing way. And it truly does impact your health and your life. I mean, how can we be, if we are waking up every morning on caffeine and just running around being grumpy, how are we going to impact the world? How are we, is God going to use us? We're just going to be a drain on society. So getting people to eat healthy, they suddenly, not do they become healthy and live longer and have more energy and vitality, but they can start planning, setting goals, doing the important things in their life. And until you get your health sorted out, there's no way you can you can kind of do those things. So it's, that's why I think it's really, really important. So the feedback I get has just, just been incredible. And every, every lunchtime in my cafe, um, it's just, you know, queues out the door. And most of the people that come to my restaurants or cafes, interchangeable word, yeah. um, are, are, are not are meat eaters. They're not, you know, mm. people that are super healthy or, or vegetarian. They're just, they're just meat eaters. People appreciate coming and have healthy food. So it's just, when I look at that and see the queue of people lined up for this vegetarian healthy food, it just, you know, it's just, it's just awesome. It's just such an amazing feeling that my little dream can impact people in so many ways. Isn't it amazing how God can put a passion in your heart mm. for something because you weren't even in cooking before. No, exactly, exactly. And it's not like you grew up loving to cook. You weren't even mm. cooking before mm. and then God put this passion in your heart and now people's lives are being impacted yeah. as a result awesome. of the dream that God has put in your and heart. I just, I just said a prayer like, God, I want you to use me. I want to do something different. I was enjoying my job. I had a really great stable life. I'm like, God, there must be something more. I just prayed for him to lead me into something. And step by step, he just led me to circumstances. And before you know it, I was in, a, in this amazing whirlwind adventure. Oh, and your cookbook is fabulous. It's Enough until you. Yeah. And beautiful. They can, How can people get it? Um, you can get it from 3ABN. I buy it on Amazon, um, so the ABCs have it. So there's lots of lots of ways What's you can it get called? it. Uh, there's, so I've got two series. I've got the Revive Cafe Cookbook. So each each year in my cafes, we um, release new recipes in the, in the menu, and basically I do a Revive Cafe Cookbook. Then there's also the Cook Thirty series, which is basically based on the TV TV programs. What's been your favorite menu to cook? Your favorite. <laughs> your, what is your favorite food like? Not just, like, like your dinner, your my favorite dinner. dinner. My favorite dinner, I just love making up a little stir fry. I, I love start, often I'll come in home and I'll basically get a pan and just get some onions and garlic cooking. Oh, and then I I'll love think, that smell. And then I'll think, okay, what should I cook now? That's just my starting point. And I'll add some ginger, some Thai curry paste, some just some nice vegetables, whatever I bought from the, from the veggie shop that day, some nice protein like some tofu, um, just some beautiful flavors, some nice wholesome foods with fresh vegetables. And to finish it off, I love a smoothie. Oh. That's my favorite thing to have a dessert. Just some frozen fruit from the freezer, a banana, a little bit of almond milk. You've got yourself an instant healthy dessert. So that's kind of my go-to combination at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about what about your wife? What does she wife, like? Um, she likes everything I cook. Well, she says she does anyway. <laughs> does she cook she, at home? She does, yeah. She's a wonderful cook. Um, but I'm normally trying to get in there, trying to get something new for my next cookbook. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of take over the kitchen, what she loves, no worries. <laughs> Um, you know, she loves to eat, she loves things very fresh, so she loves, you know, lots of fresh vegetables and things. She's always like, Jeremy, put some more fresh vegetables in, she goes in the fridge and drags it, puts some broccoli in, put this in as well, so it's, uh, she's wonderful. Oh, that's good. Now, you have a, another product called something that I have fallen in <laughs> love with. I have to tell you, I, I love fruits balls. Yes. Tell our viewers what those are. And this is another little adventure that came. So I started this cafe and we made this product called Bliss Balls, which is a fruit and nut ball. And in the cafe, my staff would put fruit and nuts in a, in a um, food processor, much like this one over here, uh -huh. and basically blend it up and roll it into little balls. And you've got these lovely little kind of rum, not rum, you know, truffle type things, uh -huh, fruit uh -huh. and nut balls. And um, they sold really well in the cafe, but my staff hated rolling them and we used breaking all our food processors with all the hard nuts. And I had a friend, a really good friend, who um, said to me, I could make a machine to make those. So we did. And we started a little company. And, um, you we, made a machine to to actually crush the nuts that are in yep, there? Yep, so and we blend them up first and we put them in this little machine that basically forms them and presses them and all these little balls come out of them. It's an amazing little machine. Wow. And we started a little company to start selling them to some of the health shops. And a couple of years later, we started selling them to the supermarkets and it's now a, um, a big selling product in New Zealand. So, And they come in, you would do a cranberry one, a banana, an apricot, 
an original one, and we've now got a peanut butter one, and they're just amazing little snacks. I'll tell you what, the cranberry ones, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I'm like, you brought some over here, and yes. I got to get some samples, and so <laughs> I'm just so hooked on it. So um, Jill brought me like several of them, and oh, I good, yes, stuffed yep. them in my drawer. <laughs> oh, they are delicious, they are delicious. and, a, and it's so good to have alternatives, you know, instead of eating sugar, cane sugar and, you know, exactly. stuff like that. This is sweetened naturally. It's just fruit and nuts and ground together. Nuts. It's just a very, very healthy dates, way of having dates, you sweeten with dates. Yeah, dates is a very sweet product we use, so it's just dried dates, dried cranberries and some, um, some cashew nuts and almonds. So good. Mm -hmm. I think I'm salivating right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is your vision for, this is a ministry for you. Yes. What is your vision for your ministry? Um, vision, yes, big word vision. I'm not sure. I just want to just keep just keep doing stuff. Um, I'm, I'm having fun doing cookbooks, doing these TV programs and the cafes. So I'd love to expand the cafes. I'd love actually somehow, because a lot of people come to me and say they want to open a, a vegetarian restaurant. And a lot of people have tried and failed. And I know how easy it is to, it's a very, it's a, the hospitality industry is a very difficult industry. Mm. And I nearly, nearly failed there. So I'd love to be able to get a model out and franchise it out so we can have little revives popping out so people can actually fulfill their dream of doing kind of a health ministry kind of cafe, but do it without all the financial pressures and all the business pressures that come with it because there are huge pressures. So I'd love to somehow be able to expand the influence mm. um, and get people to be more involved in that. So that's kind of my, project coming up. So would you do like a mentoring program where you're helping people to develop? Something like that, yeah, or some kind of a franchise type oh. agreement where people kind of, they get recipes and all the instructions and they set it up and run for it type thing. So that's I'd really love to be, I'd love to, yeah, because I think the, the health ministry is, is a really important part of, um, you know, what God wants us to, to look after. So yes. be able to, um, empowering other people to do it in a really real way, so. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. Now, how long are you gonna be in the States? I'm here just for three weeks this time, um, and then back to New Zealand. So, um, really, I really love coming to the States. It's a great, I love being in, in Thompsonville. It's just such a lovely, peaceful <laughs> place here. All the cornfields and the soy fields, it's just a, a lovely, peaceful place. So we love coming over. Well, we love having you here, and we really appreciate all that you do because what you're offering is such a blessing and you're mm. doing so many different things with it and we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. God bless you. Thanks. Yay. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to trying some of those delicious gourmet meals. There are currently two cookbooks available for purchase, Cook 30 and Cook 30.2. Both of these cookbooks are the best cookbooks that I've ever seen in my life. Trust me, I'm not just saying that. The cookbooks come with very vivid pictures and step-by-step -step instructions to help you prepare a nutritious and delicious meal in only 30 minutes. Well, we've reached the end of another program. Join us next time, and remember, it just wouldn't be the same without you.